The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, guys, how everybody's doing? This is Neil Green again with you on the uh, weekly webinar. Uh, how are you all? <laughs> okay, um, we'd like to welcome you guys joining us from GoToWebinar, uh, all of you. And of course, we are on Facebook on our homepage at itrader.com, just like every every week, every uh, Tuesday at the same time. Hope uh, you got back from work, made yourself a, a cup of tea or coffee or whatever you like, and um, ready for the webinar. Just everybody can uh, hi. Okay, hi guys. Uh, just want to do a technical check. You can you see my screen? You're supposed to see our homepage at itrader.com, and of course, hear my voice. So just uh, for me to know that all is good before <clears throat> before we go on and talk markets. Okay, so we're good. So you can see the screen. Okay, okay, great. So you can see the screen. You can hear my voice, and that's great. Okay, uh, let's talk markets. Okay. Okay, by the way, uh, you guys on Facebook, if you don't know, this service, okay, these webinars are for free. I just want to give you, I uh, want to uh, talk about it, just a few words about it. I'm doing these webinars once a week, um, every Tuesday. And as you can see, okay, all you have to do in order to register, you can go to news or scroll down here. You have, see Jonah webinar, supposedly, somewhere here. There you go, save me a seat. Just put in your first name, last name, and your email address so we can contact you back after the webinar. Uh, these webinars are taking place once a week. Uh, what I'm doing is just talking about the events that are taking place at the same week usually, and giving you some tools, okay, in order for you uh, to try to help you with the tradings. Um, talking about the events taking place at the same week, how do we trade it, how do we look at it, and so on. So you guys can go to webinar. If you have any questions during the webinar, of course, I'm going to leave some time for a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. <clears throat> but you have, if you have anything you would like to ask me during the webinar, you're more than welcome. Just write me down on the chat window just like you did now. And I'll try to answer your questions, if not all of them, some of them uh, in between the webinar. Um, of course, if you would like me to clarify anything or, you know, whatever, just let me know. So, as I said, my name is Neil. Um, I'm here once a week every Tuesday, and this time we're going to talk about the event that will take place two days from now, on November 30th, and that is the OPEC meeting. So, just a second. There you go. Trading OPEC, okay. <clears throat> some background, okay, let's talk about who is OPEC, what is OPEC, and so on for uh, some of you that don't really know. OPEC is an oil cartel and has 14 member countries, okay? We're talking about 14 members. Uh, the biggest oil producers in the cartel are Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq, okay? Uh, OPEC is responsible for around 40% of global production at around 32 million barrels per day. And OPEC's main responsibility is to keep oil prices high. Now, talking about it, OPEC is a huge organization, okay, uh, that, that we have the 14, what we call the 14 oil countries. These countries are responsible for almost 40% out of the oil export in the whole world, okay? Talking about 14 countries. Uh, some of them on the Persian Gulf, okay, Saudi Arabia is the biggest one. We have Algeria, we have Venezuela from South America, and so on. So we have 14 countries that are part of this OPEC organization, which is responsible for 40% of the oil in the world, okay? The gas that you put in your car, okay, whatever you use oil for on daily basis, 40% out of it in the whole world come from, comes from these 14 countries. We're talking about 32 billion, uh, million, I'm sorry, barrels per day. That's a lot, okay? So man, the main responsibility of OPEC, they made an organization to do anything in their power, okay, to keep the oil prices high because, of course, they want to make profits, okay, understandable, and um, hopefully they'll fail. <laughs> I'm just kidding because we want to pay less, right? So this is the OPEC organization. Uh, OPEC members meet twice a year. 
okay, in May and in November in Vienna, Austria. Okay, every year we have uh, two OPEC meetings. The first one is on May. The second is no in November 30th, uh, two days from now, in Vienna, Austria. Now, in these meetings, they discuss possible actions. The main action they can agree on is cut production. Why? As you probably know, okay, the, the, the capital market is based on demand and supply. If we have more demand, think about it. If we have less, is whatever asset you're looking at, if we have less, we have more demand, the price goes up, right? Everybody knows uh, the free market economy. If we have a lot, okay, whatever, if we have big supply, I mean prices are going down, right? If I want to buy a pair of shoes, okay, and we have like three or four pair of shoes in the whole country, the price will be high because there's a lot of demand. If we have thousands of them or millions of them, we have a lot of supply, then the price will be, demand will be low and then the price will be lower, right? So in these meetings, they discuss possible actions and the main action they want is to cut production because if they cut production, what will happen to the prices, guys? Production cuts leads to lower supply and higher prices. Okay, if we have less oil in the world, it means that the prices will go up. So th think about it. This organization, this OPEC organization is responsible for, uh, these 14 countries are responsible for 40% out of the oil export in the world. That's a lot. Okay, they have a lot of responsibility when it comes to oil prices because we we use it on daily basis, guys. Now, if they're going to keep, okay, if they're going to uh, make a decision, because there are 14 countries, okay? If only Saudi Arabia or Iraq or Iran will, will decide by itself to cut production, they don't have enough power. But if OPEC as an organization, okay, the whole 14 countries will sit together in two days in Vienna, Austria, and they're going to make a decision, all of them together, to cut production, then oil prices will go up. I mean, they're supposed to go up, right? Because supply goes down, right? Which means they might make uh, more profits, but they have to agree on that. So... Last cut production was last May, all right? Um, let's take a look what happened on May. Before we go on, let's open the MetaTrader. So when we talk about oil, we have two kinds of oil, okay? The first one is crude oil. The second is Brent oil. They both uh, work the same way, okay? If you want to trade oil, you can choose one of them. I like the CL more. You can look at Brent, whatever. You, could, you go down here. You see I take the on the market watch. These are stocks, and you go down all the way to uh, energy, CL and Brent. You see, Brent and CL in green. So I take the crude oil, CL, and I put it on a daily chart. As you can see, this is the daily chart of oil, of the crude oil, which means that each candle that you see here represents one day. Of course, a green candle means that the prices of oil went up the same day, and a red candle means exactly the opposite that the prices went down. Now, as you can see, we have a very strong uptrend, okay? Uh, because of the expectations that we had since uh, September to this meeting that we're gonna have in two days from now, you have to understand this is a huge meeting, okay? If they're gonna decide to cut production, it might, uh, price might go uh, up. Um, um, I'm talking about something extreme, okay? We're going to have a lot of movement, a lot of volatility in the, uh, uh, to, today, tomorrow, and the day after. So we have an uptrend on uh, crude oil. We have an uptrend on Brent oil, okay? This is a daily chart, which is what happened here. Let's try it daily. Uh, maybe, maybe this is the last contract. I don't know. Okay, anyhow, back to the uh, crude oil, okay? You can see the uptrend, okay? If we zoom out. Pretty clear, okay. It broke the resistance here at around 54 and kept going up. Okay, back to the PowerPoint. So, OPEC is expected to cut production in its Thursday meetings. Okay, ah, I wanted to show you what happened on May, right? This is uh, okay. Last time they cut production, let's go to the history okay, of crude oil, let's go to May of 2017. Okay, last time they've decided to cut production was here. You see May? Look what happened to the prices of oil. They went up like crazy, you see, in a few days. So, okay, based on this information, okay, if you traded long here, okay, that was a, a great trade. So, 
OPEC is expected to cut production on its Thursday meeting. Now, the production cut is expected to be 1.8 million barrels a day. So we're talking about almost, uh, instead of 32 million barrels a day, we're talking about almost 30 uh, million uh, barrels a day, which is, uh, uh, which is a lot. Okay, We're talking about almost 10%, 7%, which is a lot. Uh, Russia is not part of OPEC, but is expected to participate as well. You have to understand that most of the Russian income is out of export of gas and oil prices. By the way, Russia were very, very happy back in the days when, uh, when oil prices were very high. If you put a monthly chart, this is a monthly chart of crude oil. You can see that back in 2008, okay, prices of oil went I like $140 a barrel. Right now we're talking about $58 a barrel. So um, so it's like more than double, okay? Almost uh, three times more, more than double, which means Russia right now have a huge, huge problem because they used to make a lot of money back in the days. And right now, because their economy is relied on uh, export of gas and oil, okay, right now the situation is not that clear. Okay, just for you to understand what's going on in Russia, they're going to participate, even though they're not one of the 14 countries of OPEC. Uh, as you can see, Russia is not part of OPEC, but is expected to participate as well. Saudi Arabia is trying to push prices higher before it's um, Aramco IP, IPO next year. Aramco is a Saudi Arabian uh, gov uh, government co company. They want to go public. Okay, in the New York Stock Exchange. Okay, they want to be just like we have stocks, you know, Apple, Facebook, and so on, and Nasdaq. Okay, they want to be part of the U.S. market. They want to go public. Now, when they go public, they want the prices of oil to be as high as possible. Because right now, it's not a public company. Okay, it's um, it's not a public company. It's a government company. Uh, owned by uh, Saudi Arabia, and they want to go public in the United States of America. Okay, they want to have stocks, which means they want oil prices to be as high as possible in order for them to make more prop profits and public uh, the share with a higher price. So, okay, this is another thing uh, for Saudi Arabia. This is why they want to cut production in two days from now. Anything less than 1.8 million, 8 million barrels could be considered a huge surprise. Now, you have to understand this whole market, doesn't matter what you trade on, okay, it's based on expectations. Everything that you see on the capital market, whatever asset you trade on, it's based on expectations. Now, we trade on the difference between the actual result and the forecast, right? If you ever traded fundamentally, how do you trade it? You go to the event. Okay, you can put support, resistance levels, and so on, but on the event itself, you trade on the difference between the actual number. Okay, right now we have a meeting of a whole day, but in general, the actual number and the forecast. Right, if the actual result was better than the forecast, it's usually good for some assets, bad for others, depends on the correlation, and uh, the other way around. Now, <clears throat> anything less than uh, 1. million barrels could be considered a huge surprise. Traders should look for the final announcement on Thursday. So you can write itself uh, down, okay? You can find it all over the internet on the financial portals, okay? Look for the final announcement on Thursday. I want you to check if it's a cut of more than 1.8 million or uh, 8 million or less, okay? If it's less, that's gonna be a big surprise, okay? Uh, but if it's gonna be the same, okay? No news is the same thing. No news is good news and if we have more, then uh, if the produ cut production will be 2 million or so on or more, we expect oil prices to fly up. Okay, rumors about the announcement would generate speculation before the actual result, which means you can trade it, okay, the whole day. You can trade this event the whole day uh, because rumors about the announcement could generate speculation before actual result, which means we have a whole day of meetings. We're gonna have a lot of rumors, okay, coming out from Vienna, Austria. A lot of things are going to be published, okay? The public don't, re we don't really know. Some of us do. And there's going to be a lot of money coming in. So high volatility in the price of oil is expected throughout the day. And for us traders, volatility, this is what we're looking for, right? We trade on volatility. Traders are recommended to prepare their accounts accordingly, of course. And take profit and stop loss orders are expected to be stretched tomorrow, okay? Which means 
when you trade tomorrow, okay, uh, you have to understand that on oil prices, if, if it's going to be, if you trade Brent oil or crude oil or whatever you would, I'm not, not talking about tomorrow, two days from now. Um, or if you trade on currencies that are correlated, I'm going to show you on the next page with oil prices. Um, it's, I think it's better for you, okay, to put your tech profits and stop loss, not so uh, close by to uh, the trade itself, but stretch it a little bit. Uh, oil is in a strong uptrend. I just showed you, okay, on the daily on the daily chart, you can see crude oil strong uptrend. You see, trend is your friend, they say. And uh, Thursday's uh, Thursday's announcement could support this trend, of course. Okay, if they're going to they're going to cut production 1.8 million or more, we expect this uptrend to be stronger. And crude and Brent are trading close to a two-year high. Okay, if we go and put it monthly, look at the two years. Last two years, this is 2015. Okay, very very high right now. See that? Okay, back to, okay. So crude and Brent are trading close to two years high. The next upside target for crude, okay, is 62 a barrel from mid 2015. Then the next upside target for Brent, you can write it down, is $69.5 from uh, the same period of time, the middle of 2015. Okay, just for you to know, if you look at a MetaTrader and you wanna put a resistance and support lines, okay, when we say 62 on crude oil, we're talking, you see this? This is the next target right here. You see 62? This is the next resistance line, okay? You can put it on your meta traders, okay, on your platform. This is the next resistance line from mid-2015. We're talking about May and June of 2015. Right now, the price is $58 a barrel, so we're talking about a $4 different. And if they're going to cut production, uh, if OPEC are going to cut production, as we expect, we're gonna have a lot of. Um, we, we, we're gonna have. We, we wanna see, okay, if the price will go over the resistance line at 62 or reverse. Okay, it's gonna be very interesting. But um, this is the line right here. Okay, so it doesn't matter what event you trade. By the way, if you trade it fundamentally, just like we do now, you always wanna combine it with the technical analysis. Okay, you wanna put support and resistance levels. You wanna put some key levels to understand how high or how low the price might get. And we we expect a lot of volatility. Now the next upside target we said 62 and 69.5 for Brent oil. Traders are recommended to diversify their trading portfolio. Guys, it doesn't matter what event you trade on. It doesn't matter if you trade on the everyday. It doesn't matter what you do. Okay. The the, the whole idea is to have as the portfolio to have as big as you can. Okay. To fund your account and have enough money in order for you to be able to diversify your portfolio. We never, I say it every webinar, I'll repeat it again. We never want to put all the eggs in one basket. Sometimes the market goes against us. If you trade enough time, you know that. But we want to diversify the, our portfolio. We want to put not all the eggs in one basket, not all the money in the money in one position, but take a few positions. Now we have correlations, okay? Oil currencies, we call it, like the Canadian dollar, the Norwegian uh, Corona and the ruble. Okay, these three countries, Canada, Norway, and Russia, are not part of the 14 countries of OPEC, but they are, let's say, a, a huge percentage out of their economy is based on export of oil. They are oil uh, producers, big oil producers, and they're dependent on oil prices, which means this meeting on uh, Russia are going to participate on November 30th is very, very important for these three countries. And according to this, um, to this, uh, we have these three currencies, the NOC, the ruble, and the Canadian dollar, which are very, they're strongly, strongly correlated with the oil prices. So you can trade it as well, could affect as well. Now, oil, oil stocks like Exxon and Chevron could also be affected. Okay, same correlation. Where do you find it? On the MetaTrader, look at this. Let's start with the currencies, okay? I go up all the way to the currencies. Knock, you look for N, okay? So we have the Euro versus the Norwegian, okay? If you wanna trade on the dollar versus, doesn't really matter, okay? We have here, USD, knock, okay? Ruble, USD, ruble. And if you wanna trade Canadian dollar, you can trade USD card or card, whatever you like. 
versus doesn't matter okay these three currencies okay are very they're strongly correlated with oil prices if you like to trade stocks you can do everything okay whatever you like you have we have here uh exxon okay and we have chevron which are here Okay, these are two major American oil companies. And of course, if OPEC will decide to cut production, oil prices will go up, and this is great for these companies as well. So you can diversify. I, I recommend you to diversify your portfolio and split the risk. Okay, not go only with uh only with one asset or two. Uh, diversification leads to more risk sharing and lower portfolio volatility. Uh, diversification is, um, where am I? Okay. The region could also be attractive, meaning holding swaps on specific positions, which means some positions you can take overnight. You have to understand this event is not an event for one or two hours. It's not like the NFP or the interest rate decision or any other event that you see on our website or uh, um, you know, on the, the economic calendar. This event will, should affect, okay, the market for at least a few days, maybe a week, okay? So you're gonna see a lot of volatility during the day on Thursday and the days, the next days after, okay? So you're gonna have trading volatilities all the time. Pay attention to the resistance and support lines, understand how the market works, and look at the numbers, look at the announcement at the end of the day on Thursday, and of course, good luck. Um, I think it was pretty clear, but you have, if you have any questions, guys, uh, this is the time. All right, ask me. If you would like me to repeat anything, if uh, whatever. Uh, you guys on Facebook again. In the meanwhile, I'll show you. You can join us here, okay, on our homepage at itrader.com. Go to news, webinars, and you can register, put in your first name, last name, and email if you want to register for next week. I'm going to be here every Tuesday. Okay, the same hour talking about the events of the same week. And you're it's for free. You're more than welcome to join us to get information on the market and all the news that you need. Uh, you guys on GoToWebinar, I would like to thank you all very much for participating. Hopefully, I'll see you here next Tuesday on the next uh, topic. And um, if you have any further question during the week, more than welcome to email me. I'll try to answer all your emails and um, see you here next week. So thank you very much for participating. And remember, the meeting is in two days, okay? You have all the information needed. Good luck. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.